then please um, turn off your video, okay? Um, otherwise, we can just get going. Are you uh, ready, Ethan? Yep. Okay, so. Ready as, ever, as uh, ever will be. <laughs> so, we wanted to talk about what is uh, hyphenolica olive oil, what's this all about? So, I know that olive oil has a kind of ancient history. It's nothing new, even though it's in the supermarkets everywhere. But, so, can you tell us a bit more about the history? Sure. Um, well, I'll start with hyphenolic olive oil, because um, that's my favorite subject and then we'll, we'll drill down to everything else. Uh, first of all, uh, I see it philosophically, it's a symbol of excellence. Uh, it's kind of obvious when you see that the ancient athletes, they used to wear it, that's what they got for uh, uh, winning in the Olympics, the wreath of, um, uh, are made from an olive branch. Um, second of all, and practically, is the uh, olive oil is the highest nutritional, uh, nutritional olive oil there is. It has, uh, and we'll get into that why. Uh, and third is that it's a, um, um, uh, scientifically, it's very, very fascinating to, uh, to scientists around the world and they're studying, very intensely studying now, olive oil uh, for its uh, possible medicinal uses. Even not only preventative, but even now is to find treatments using olive oil, uh, olive oil constituents. And that's what we're going to talk about, the phenolic compounds. So uh, first of all, uh, olive oil is a, uh, is a juice, is a, is a fruit, and uh, the olive oil is a juice. Now, historically, it's, uh, it's a way of, um, obviously, it was first treated as a fruit because it was picked off the tree before they even had any inkling of, uh, of uh, making olive oil. They picked the fruit and they used it. They tried to eat it. It's okay, very bitter, but they used it in many different ways for uh, a lot of uh, uh, skin conditions and also for healing wounds because uh, you can take the olive off the tree and just rub it on your skin and, and it's uh, anti-inflammatory. So you could use it for any kind of uh, inflammatory skin condition. Uh, so they experimented with this. And so, so they, by doing that, they figured out that the green olives are more potent than the black olives. So early harvest olives, like the un unripened olives, are more effective than the black olives, which are more ripened. So when it came to actually discover how to make olive oil, then it was simple just to figure out that the green olive oil, the olive oil made from green olives would be more, more, more powerful, more powerful medicine, because that's what it was back then. And that's why I believe the evolution of uh, uh, olive oil happened. Uh, from the olive, obviously, it's just plain logic. And uh, now it's being used in, and being re widely researched for a lot of um, a lot of uh, preventative uh, reasons, but also for uh, for uh, treatment uh, for conditions like Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, type two diabetes, Parkinson's, and cancer, many types of cancer, breast, prostate, liver, colon cancer, and leukemia. And, um, but in, in ancient uh, times, uh, the Greeks used to know and make this olive oil, which they advertised widely through the Olympic. Uh, that was actually the first marketing campaign ever in the history of the planet, I believe. By putting the olive leaf wreath on the head of a winning uh, athlete, they advertised to the world that this is a, a, a superfood. And wherever they made, uh, wherever they went, they took the olive tree with them and planted an olive tree. That was their way they colonized all most of the known world back then, uh, and spread the knowledge about the olive tree. And uh, that was how they uh, gained favor with the locals because they showed them another way to cultivate the olive tree and brought their own varieties from Greece, uh, which were more from wild varieties. Uh, that they that they uh, that they used that was the basis. Okay, and, so uh, Ethan, I don't interrupt you too much, but um, yes. the uh, we know it's been around for a very long time, um, right. and I I've, I've been hearing um, well, we all know what olive oil is, and I know it should be extra virgin olive oil. Um, but what's all of this about high phenolic uh, olive oil? Well, this is very interesting because you know olive oil 
has gone through many uh, many different stages over the history of world, of mankind. Uh, when it started as a superfood, then it became more like a food. And it, uh, lately, in the last hundred years, with mass production, it became olive oil tried to com compete with the other olive oil, with other, the other oils like corn oils and um, other types of oils on the market. So the quality was, was uh, brought down to the lowest common denominator, unfortunately. So people's tastes became accustomed to this kind of tasteless olive oil that, was, that tasted like oil. Like high phenolic olive oil does not taste like an olive oil uh, in the sense that it's not oily. It's fresh, it's green, it has a character, it has a lot of uh, a taste, it's, uh, it's bitter to the tongue, it's uh, peppery to the throat. And um, it was really recognized in 2012 when the EU, after 10 years of study in, uh, by a team in Barcelona in Spain, they, um, they came up with a health claim for high phenolic olive oil based on what the concentration of phenolic compounds are in the olive oil, they gave it a health claim that it uh, reduces the LDL oxidation. Uh, and this is when it, the olive oil contains at least 250 milligrams per kilogram. So when they did this, they, they created a new category that we can measure, that we know how to, um, uh, uh, how to um, uh, identify, we can, uh, we can test it and we can uh, at any time and find out if it's really that olive oil. Whereas this was unheard of before, because before all you had to do is you had tasters and ganoleptic analysts. And unfortunately, like, like in wine, uh, olive oil tasting is, a, is an art form that requires a great deal of, uh, of um, experience, which most people lack. So uh, it's more of a subjective kind of marketing scheme rather than actual uh, search for the best quality olive oil. Um, so. Okay, so uh, Ethan, we know that you're really the moral authority and an expert in olive oil. So, um, <laughs> maybe, well, maybe you can tell us just a little bit more about these uh, polyphenols. It's like, it sounds a bit technical, but um, can you just like <laughs> very briefly explain what polyphenols are and where they come from? Well, polyphenols are like micro, uh, micronutrients of, uh, in the olive. Uh, it's kind of like vitamins. You can say they're like vitamins. And uh, they're water soluble, which means they like to be in water. They don't like oil. So interesting part is that the, these uh, polyphenols, they're actually biophenols is the actual name, uh, are in the olive, but in the watery part of the olive. So what happens is when the olive goes through the um, olive mill, where the olive is smashed and crushed, and then it's uh, through a malacta where it's um, turned over and over. That gives an opportunity for the polyphenols in the water to enter into the oil. So that is where the art happens because these polyphenols are created in the olive mill. They do not actually exist in the olive. Oh. In the olive, there's the basic, um, the basic uh, polyphenols, which are or biophenols, which is um, the uh, hydro hydroxytyrosol and uh, tyrosol. And, but when they go into the malaxer uh, stage of uh, in the olive mill, they, they change because of the enzymatic, um, enzymatic activity in the, uh, in the mush. And as you go, so in the beginning, they change to one thing. And then by the end, they change to the final most complex form of polyphenols, which are oleacanthal and oleacin. Those wow. are the last stage, uh, uh, last stage uh, creations in polyphenols, the most complex. And we're finding that they're more, the, most, the most interesting. Uh, scientists are focusing them extremely because they're very powerful antioxidant, very powerful anti-inflammatory, especially oh, uh, oleacanthal. Yeah. Are, those, are those the like two compounds that we should be targeting for the most health benefits? Yes, they, they have been researched a great deal because those are the first, they were the most, um, uh, because we found that the oleacanthal is also a preservative. So it preserves the olive oil. So the more oleacanthal an olive oil has, it will stay fresher longer. Whereas we see this in the testing, especially with the, 
development of the nuclear magnetic resonance method of measuring polyphenols, uh, we can see a full spectrum of the polyphenols and their specific weight in each uh, olive oil. So then if we see, for example, we can see if an olive oil has oxidized when the chain, the, 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 uh, when the alacatol is much, much higher than the oleacin. Like these in specific uh, varieties in olive oil in Greece, where they have usually the olacatol maybe 500 and the oleacin is about 250. So when I see an olive oil that has olacatol 500 and oleacin 50, I know this olive oil, something happened to it. Either it was uh, uh, too long into the, into the olive mill and, uh, and oxidized, and the first uh, polyphenol to disappear is oleacin, uh, or to, uh, and then uh, oleacin stays longer. All right, so uh, I think therefore we've established that that phenol that, or high phenolic olive oil is the one that's good for your health. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about what this EU health claim is all about and, and the research that's gone into it? Yeah, well, it was like a 10 year study uh, and culminated into a, uh, I think it was a seven country, 2,500 uh, human clinical uh, trial. Uh, and then it was approved by EFSA and then was taken up by the European, uh, European uh, Union. And um, so it created a new category of olive oil, which um, it's created a lot of controversy because you know the olive oil business is uh, is a um, very big business, and it hasn't been the most um, uh, you know. For example, in the olive oil business, they're not making the big money out of extra virgin olive oil. In fact, extra virgin olive oil is like less than ten percent of the market. Where they make their money is olive oil. So they really don't care when they pick the olive oil because they can pick it when, it's, uh, when the olives are way mature or even when they've gone rotten. They can make olive oil from it and they cleanse it through a chemical process and sell it as olive oil, plain olive oil, because they've been advertising the fact of the, of the, of the healthy monounsaturated fat it contains. The problem is to, to get the benefit from the monounsaturated uh, fat, is you have to remove the animal fats from your diet because you're just adding more calories. If you're eating animal fats, you're having your bacon and eggs and you're having your butter, then you're adding olive oil on top, then you're overdosing on, on calories and you'll gain weight. Uh, whereas the, uh, if you eat more of a vegetarian diet or less lean meat and add, um, and add olive oil, then it's actually uh, good for you. So it's a very... Uh, Whereas the, where now, when it comes to the polyphenol, this is the main thing. All the clinical trials we've done, and this is why we get a lot of flack from the olive oil industry. All of those we do, what we do is, all we do is we tell them to keep the diet as it is. Don't change the diet. All that we have to, all we tell them is, if you're having any kind of oil, use this olive oil instead of any other olive oil. And we give them like 40 or 50 grams a day, they take it out 25 grams in the morning and 25 at night or 50 grams in the morning or 40 grams, depending on what the, what the uh, protocol is, uh, with no changes in the diet. And what we're finding is that there are changes in physically that are measurable. Uh, we see that uh, high lactantal olive oil thins the blood. Uh, and there's other uh, measurable with Alzheimer's with uh, just by changing their olive oil, We've seen some um, statistically significant results in, in uh, significant improvement of their uh, faculties to remember, to uh, remember numbers, remember stories, uh, and uh, recall, and so forth. And also we've done with, um, with, um, with other tests we've done, we see just by changing the olive oil, not the diet. Okay, so, so that, whereas uh, the olive oil industry was all about changing the diet, changing people's diet to more Mediterranean diet with less <laughs> and less meat and so forth. With high phenolic olive, you don't need to change the diet to have a certain effect. Of course, if you change the diet, then it's, it's so much better if you have Mediterranean diet plus high phenolic olive oil, but it's not actually necessary to have an effect. Okay, uh, Ethan, uh, Roger. Roger Phillips has a question. Okay. Uh, let's... You're Can you hear? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I've I've read that there's 
uh, home test for the to test the different olive oils to to find out what the what how how good a quality they are. Is that true? Are there home tests now for this? Uh, not yet. We have developed, actually, uh, we, uh, uh, our company, Aristolio, did fund a study uh, that led to an invention called the Aristolio Test Kit. Uh, that's how the name of the company came. Uh, but it's, it's for, um, for uh, commercial use only right now. And it measures the uh, com combined uh, concentration of lacantal and lesson only. Uh, but we hope to have it more of an, on a retail level. Because right now it uses some um, some um, reagents that are very strong, like uh, acetic acid, which we can't make it you know make it on a retail level because it's quite dangerous uh, substance. Uh, so it needs a special. Uh, it needs to be done in a lab or in an olive mill in a special right space. There. But no, there's nothing available for retail use right now. But may perhaps soon. We're working on it. All right. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just sharing an example of uh, of what you've already done. Yes, so, this is yeah. what it looks like on the screen. That's the result. So when I have the greener the um, the olive oil, the liquid, uh, the more polyphenol. So when you say a thousand, that's a thousand milligrams. That's one gram per kilogram of combined oleacanthal and oleacin. Now that is a powerful olive oil. Does that answer your question, well. Roger? Pardon me. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I, I'm, I'm very interested in this and I'm trying to find ways of comparing different different olive oils from around the world. And um, I know that a lot of the olive oils I buy in the supermarket is only a small percentage of olive oil, even though it's labeled olive oil. You know? yeah. Yes, yes. Well, you know, it's a very difficult task. I tell you, I talk a lot against about the argonoleptic judges, but they're not all bad. There are some real geniuses there because it's a real uh, art form. I've met, for example, one girl down in Peloponnese and she just shocked me. I, guess I gave her a t olive oil to taste and she, she said, you know, this was um, done high temperature. I said, no, 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 it was 27 degrees in the olive oil. She said, no, no, she, she tried it again. She said, no, I think it's... Um, more than 27, she says, more than 30. And she tasted it some more. And she says, it's about 35, 37. <laughs> and she was right. It was, very, it was a very high temperature. It was made at high temperature and she could taste it. Mm -hmm. And uh, come so close to the actual, uh, the actual temperature that was actually uh, produced. But it's a very rare talent uh, and art. But unfortunately, you can become a Ganolept Canalyst, pretty, pretty, take a few courses and within a year you can be an expert but it's a lifelong passion lifelong study to be an actual you know real judge for all of all i see so i do respect the uh, the the uh, the profession it's just it's become so filled with people who took a few courses and think they know about all of all Thank, right. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, and I know uh, Raful has a has a question about the milling process. Yes. yes. Um, well, uh, I I manage a co-op. We're a group of farmers, and uh, we. Sorry, can you speak up a little bit? I can't quite hear you. We manage to. Uh, yeah, uh, I I manage a co-op. We have like uh, twenty farmers in it, and we have our own mill. And we continuously try to improve the quality of olive oil. Yes. Um, so the question is, in the milling process, um, does it help or not to add water? As you said in the Malaxer, where the, 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 you said that the, the, the real action happens and the phenols mm -hmm. go, get into the oil. So adding water helps or we should reduce the quantity of water that we put there? We should, uh, if possible, not use water at all. Sometimes it's necessary because if the olives are dry, it was a dry season, they don't have enough juice in them. So you may, you may need to add some water to get, otherwise it's gonna, they're going to get stuck in the, in, in the smash or the, where they get in the, uh, yeah. in the, in the knives. Uh, but uh, no, you should not use olive oil, I mean water in, in the malaxer. But we've, we have designed um, 
the last three years, we had a program with the EU called Aristoyo. Um, it was part of a, um, a three-year, five-country study, including Spain, Italy, Croatia, Greece, and Cyprus, where we, uh, where we have over 3,000 uh, olive uh, growers, and we studied the methods of growing. We studied what's happening in the olive mills and compared temperatures, uh, ways of harvesting, time of, um, from, the, from the harvest to the olive mill is very important. Like if you can do it within a couple of hours, it's the best uh, yeah, for polyphenols. And we've developed a guide. So if you send us your email, if you send me a note, I'll send you the guide we've developed with instructions how to produce high phenolic uh, olive oil. And it gives the instructions even inside the mill? Yes, yes, yes. Some general ones, but we can give you more specific. Uh, we can have, start a conversation if you like, and we can uh, uh, give you more information if, if, as, you, as you need it. Okay, what country are you in? in? In Lebanon. Lebanon, fantastic. Yes, you have one good grower there, Zaydun. Zaydun, the organic? Well, what Zaytun is what the what is the meaning of olive oil? Is yes, the meaning of yes. olives. It's right. Zaytun. There's one there's one organic olive oil grower in Lebanon who's doing pretty Zaytuna. good these days. Zaytuna, yeah. Yeah, Zaytuna, that's it, yes. And we have uh, our our uh, uh, the type we have of uh, olives is called uh, uh, it's named uh, the it, it's the national olive uh, small green. It's uh, mm -hmm. named here because that's where the uh, Phoenicians used to export the oil. Right. Port of export. Um, so oh, interesting. Uh, okay. I'm, yeah, uh, let's start a conversation. We can definitely uh, help you out. Yeah. yeah let's follow and, up with that. Okay. Uh, and it has to sit in the Malaxa for a while, right? For that. No, uh, well, about, we recommend about 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yes. Uh, we put it for less, we put it like 15 because of production. So I'll, tell, I'll tell you a little secret that we just discovered. Okay, when, when the olive oil comes out of the malak, out of, out of the mill, okay, the first olive oil that comes out is the lowest phenolic olive oil. This, the middle part is the middle phenolic olive oil. The last olive oil that comes out is the highest phenolic olive oil. And can, it can differ in phenolic content from uh, up to three times. Oh. So when it first, the first that comes out is not the highest phenolic olive oil. Oh, because it, okay, Ethan, that's probably going to bring us to another question because right. John, John McNamara right. was going, you know, it's sometimes difficult to find the phenolic numbers on a label. Um, so and we know that. So what, the, what are the best numbers to buy? for a okay, high uh, one? I'll just well, bring up the, I'm just going to bring up the NMR while, while yes. you're answering the question. Yeah, the, first of all, it's, uh, it's very difficult to tell by the label because, uh, first of all, they're not really allowed on the label. That's not um, something that um, the olive oil industry wants to publicize. So individual growers do it, uh, but it's not a generally acceptable, accepted practice. Uh, so you see it in some countries, you can't do it. Like in, uh, in Europe, we can't do it, although there's a health claim. All we can do is say that it's over 250. We cannot yeah, say how yeah. much it actually is. What I'm actually showing right the, now is, it's all in Greek, um, Ethan, but uh, I'm just showing ah. uh, an example of uh, the NMR testing that, that gets Yeah, they, here it shows, it breaks down every single uh, phenolic compound in it and how much, what the concentration is. Uh, now the method that's used by in the States or in Australia or anywhere else uh, is a method that's, um, uh, called HPLC, uh, which basically cannot measure the actual polyphenols that are in the olive oil. So what they do is they change them into the two basic forms, tyrosol, and they measure that. The problem is tyrosol is much uh, lighter uh, than oleic and oleacin. It's about half the weight, molecular weight. So when you're measuring, it's like measuring apples and oranges, apples and uh, lemons. The apples are twice the size of a lemon, right? So if you, if you measure them based on a lemon, the weight of an apple based on a lemon, you, it's, it's less weight. So you're, 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 you're measuring it at a, at a, it's a wrong measurement. So usually HPLC measures up to 50% less 
polyphenols that are actually in the olive oil. From 50 to 80% uh, of the actual olive oils in the uh, actual phenol compounds in the olive oil. So they underestimate them. NMR is the most accurate method of measuring it. And also there's another method developed in, uh, in Spain, LCMSMS, which was the method that was originally used to, uh, for the, um, to create the health claim. Okay, so maybe we can develop that a little bit more. We've got about uh, five minutes uh, uh, left. Okay. And I just wanted to talk uh, or to ask like, so can anyone just go ahead and start consuming you know, really high phenolic um, extra virgin olive oil right now today. What, what, um, what do we have to consider? Uh, well, you have to trust the source uh, where it came from because it's very sensitive uh, to light, temperature, and, uh, and um, oxygen. So it has to be properly bottled. It has to be milled, has properly harvested milled. There's a whole lot of processes and you'll see in the guide that have to come into play in order to create the perfect or the best high phenolic olive oil uh, and then to get it to the to the get it to the person who wants to consume it it's not like the other olive oil so we're developing new ways perhaps to put it in refrigerators because it definitely needs to be refrigerated uh around 16 degrees would be ideal uh because then it doesn't um doesn't uh, become thick I mean, I keep it in the fridge down uh, my olive oil with uh, the vegetables because it's a juice. It's a vegetable juice uh, in the form of an oil. So that's where I keep it and it never gets uh, thick and um, it usually works out. So you need to have the... Now, these days, the best way to do it is direct online because once you put it in a store, you lose control of the quality. And even though you may have started a very high phenolic olive oil, by the time you buy it a year later on the shelf, it may not be that. So right now, the best way to buy it is online because uh, the online stores that we know and uh, are uh, they're in high phenolic, we try to help them out and a lot of them are very good. Um, but we're gonna have some standards soon because with our store program, we're gonna have a certification program with the um, olive oil. So we'll be able to certify and have a symbol like a historical symbol, like a bio symbol to put in an olive oil to say that it has met all the criteria that it was, it was uh, the olive oil was uh, certified, the olive oil is certified, the bottler, the transporter, and the online retailer or retail store. And this symbol can be used also in restaurants to advertise the fact that they serve high phenolic olive oil. Uh, so this will become an, another symbol like the bio, like organic, uh, in the marketplace of olive oil to distinguish this category of olive oil from all the rest. That's the plan, the next two years. So we'll develop a far powerful association between these five countries and olive growers to, uh, to export olive oil and uh, to distribute it, make sure it's, it's the right, uh, right uh, it's the olive oil that you paid for because it's obviously much more expensive than normal olive oil. And there's some, there's some examples just showing up here of, um, of what to look for. Um, is, it, is it, sorry, I just, uh, yes. I, went, I just went past it. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I, I guess John's question is like, you know, when are we going to get to that point? Well, this, there, this are Historia Awards. Uh, we give a uh, award based on, on the final content. So we test the olive oils by an organoleptic the panel to make sure that it, indeed it is an, um, uh, extra virgin olive oil, it has no defects. And from then on, we base the awards on the phenolic con content. Got to like two or three minutes left to, uh, okay. if, is there, if there's anything that we haven't covered, can you, uh, we're gonna uh, have another more in-depth, um, I guess more scientific um, uh, follow-up to this uh, next Wednesday where we can get into a lot of um, like scientific details. Are, are there any general questions right now that you would like answered, just let us know, hold up your hand or type it in the mm -hmm. chat and I'll pass it on to Ethan. Um, hey, just a quick question. Yes. Is, um, uh, Ethan, are you gonna go through some of the um, high phenolic uh, oils that you would recommend? Yes, next week. Okay, cool. That's yes, what I thought. Yes, yes, yes. And where to buy them too. Sure. Yeah.
and we could get more information on the on the uh, website, obviously, right? Yes, yeah. and write me, send me an email, aristolio.com at gmail.com, just like the website, aristolio.com at gmail.com, and um, I'll answer all your questions and uh, send you as much as information as you need. Awesome. That we have. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you plan to join um, next week, um, if you want to send us your questions ahead of time, we'll make sure that we uh, include all of that. All right. Really appreciate it. Excellent. Well, nice, uh, nice to meet you all. And hope one day you come to Greece or Cyprus and we can meet in person. Or I come to where you are. We'll see. Grand Junction, Colorado. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's better than Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I like Colorado, yes. Yeah, it's pretty. And I'd love to go to Lebanon, too. Does the, does the olive trees have to grow in a desert region? Uh, we found, well, no, yes and no. depends on the variety. Um, some varieties do very well in a wetter environment. But generally speaking, the trees that are not watered, are more high phenolic than the ones that are watered. Wow. Because when the tree is stressed, it creates more uh, these uh, biophenols as protection because they're anti, they're anti insecticides. They protect the tree from its um, enemies. Awesome. <laughs> Rod 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 Roger, as you can probably tell, there's probably not much that uh, Ethan doesn't know about olives <laughs> and olive growing and producing <laughs> high phenolic olive oil. Um, and That's I don't why it's sort of a little bugs in us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say before we before we close down, we've had a, a couple of people that joined uh, quite late. That I'm not scolding you. Uh, I'm just saying um, <laughs> if you look, at, if you want to uh, follow up on what we did, uh, Aristolio.com. It's in the it's in the chat box. Uh, you can see it. Uh, send us your messages, and hopefully you'll be able to join us next Wednesday at the same time. It's eleven in the morning um, Eastern Standard Time. Um, yes, and this Tina, has will, been, sorry, Tina, will this brought, will this um, um, recording be on the um, on the website? Yes, I, yes, uh, yes. Yes, as soon as we can render it, we'll get it up there. Excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for great. coming in and having such great questions. Hopefully, we'll look forward to seeing all of you, even those that only have the last few minutes um, next Wednesday, and we can answer, send you questions in advance, and we'll make sure it's not a waste of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Nice meeting you. Bye, All right. Everyone. Nice meeting you. Uh, take care. Thanks so See much. See you again next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.